What's up, Steelhead Sous Vide Steaks? I'm Quackers Co., and this is a fish fry for Marooners Bay. For our cookware, we have the Splatter Shot Jr., the End Zap, the Mini Splatling, and the Classic Squiffer. This composition is looking pretty good for the bay. With two very high mobility shooters and a charger with piercing damage, we have some solid DPS that we can deal here with this composition. Whether it's turf painting, wall painting, or dealing any damage to some enemies, this composition has got it handled. Of course, to really make the bay work, you have to make sure that that charger is dealing the most damage. That squiffer has the highest multi-target DPS that it can deal, as long as you're utilizing the range that the squiffer has. The squiffer also doesn't have the jump lag whenever you're charging it, so it's a fantastic charger to play a little more aggressively. Charge it up as you're jumping down to the ground level, or the shoreline, and release that charge for some maximum damage output. And since we have some really good single target DPS weapons, as well as some multi-target DPS weapons, the only bosses that we should really have a problem with are fish sticks and steelheads. But since we have those two really high mobility shooters, it should be pretty easy to lay some damage down and some turf coverage and activate those slamolids, utilizing them as you get to the top. And it's really helpful to use momentum to your advantage. When that slamolid is going up, you can jump while it's moving upwards and that'll give you a little bit more momentum going up. And the same thing can be said about the elevators. Try to think of some really interesting ways where you can use those jump physics as well as charging squid surges on those elevators to get to the top. This composition does look a little bit tough for taking out stingers there at the far ends of the shoreline, but try to remember the ways that we can use different heights of ledges to lure the enemies into different areas, and try to make some openings that way you can take these enemies out. The easiest weapon to take out stingers in this composition will be the mini splatling. Just make sure you charge it up and then move your aim while you're firing and it should take it out with just one charge. One thing that will be really important with this composition is making sure that you're supporting your teammates whenever they're going down to the shoreline. We do have some really easy DPS to use, but the DPS per single weapon is still sitting just a little bit low. So make sure you remember those moments where you need to retreat back to the basket or to some other location, that way you can stay alive and keep running those eggs. You just have to make sure that your response on priority targets are super duper quick, that way you don't take any of those desirable lures all the way there to the shoreline. And keep in mind, if the squiffer is not dealing with the lessers, everyone else is going to make sure that they need to focus on taking them out. So if you can run this composition with specific roles, that would be really nice, but you gotta make sure that that splatter shot and that end zap are doing the egg running. Okay, let's talk about the occurrences here at Marooners Bay. For a glowflies and a griller's wave, not too much changes between a normal tide and a high tide, but to make them work the same exact way, you gotta keep your strategies really tight. For a glowflies occurrence, whoever is targeted needs to move themselves all the way to the right side right at the beginning of the Great Bridge. At this location, all of the enemies will funnel into one spot, making it easier to deal all that damage. We have three shooters, so make sure that you're not getting in the way of anyone's aim. And as long as you can maintain that line of damage, it'll be really easy to splat those goldies and then move that damage line forward, that way you can get those eggs and then get them into the basket. On a normal tide, you can jump off and use the elevators to your advantage, but it's dangerous to stand on top of them. You're going to want to lift up the elevator and then use the walls. But even at that moment, you're running on a timer to get up to the top of that platform before the elevator hits the ground level. Try to make sure that you stay with all your teammates and maintain that line of damage. And just look out for when those glowflies change who is targeted as that's what's gonna change your situation. Be prepared to activate a special before it's too late. For a griller's occurrence, I do find it as the hardest wave to clear in the entire game of Salmon Run right now. As a big problem with these Splatoon 2 stages is people running the strategies that worked in the previous game. We need to make sure that that griller is getting all the way to the basket, but then we also need to make sure that the small fry are being dealt with. If we're all split up in different spots on the stage, then those small fry will just go everywhere and it'll be really chaotic. One helpful thing to know is the griller takes a little bit of time to do 90 degree turns. So try to utilize those little moments to jump across to the other side of the stage and to cause some damage Try to be aware of where that second griller is, and try to be aware of where the small fry are coming from. You have to play griller waves super duper tight, but as long as you can get that griller all the way to the basket, it makes it that much easier to reach quota on this stage. One other helpful thing to know is if it's on a normal tide, whenever you jump onto the elevators, whether or not that elevator is in movement, that griller will change who it is targeting. So be aware of when you're jumping onto that elevator, as it might turn all of the grillers towards your teammates and wipe them really quickly. And that's why I say try to keep your strategies tight where they don't utilize jumping down to that lower shoreline. When it comes to a high tide, we lose all of that shoreline and we can't utilize that situation. So when we're on a high tide here at Marooners Bay, we have to maintain that basket area as our main base of operations. And we have the turf coverage in this composition to make that situation really work. So when you're on a high tide at Marooners Bay, 
you're probably going to have to utilize the snatchers to get those eggs and get them closer to the basket. Some of these spawning locations for snatchers aren't that conducive for getting our eggs closer to the basket really, but they still can do a good job at getting them just that much closer. So be prepared to utilize slamelids and fish sticks to get advantages on these priority targets, because if we don't deal with them, then we can't stay there at the basket. So with all this mobility that we have, try to be careful about getting yourself too far to the end of the boat on a high tide. But there are some walls at the end there that you can paint as a means of escape. But with how many enemies spawn at higher hazards, you're going to want to keep yourself right there at the basket or halfway between the basket and the shoreline. For a low tide at Marooner's Bay, we do have just a little bit more turf that we can move around on, and we have that turf coverage with our weapons. So try to get this area painted quick and keep it painted all through the match. If you can take that squiffer and start to use that piercing damage and take out as many lesters as possible, it'll be easy for these other high turf coverage weapons to make approaches onto shoreline bosses. They also have some fantastic ink efficiency, so try to keep yourself topped off and leveled up, that way you're ready to throw those bombs at some fly fish. What's really helpful on a low tide at Marooner's Bay is that you still have that upper area of the boat, that way you can escape to in case things get really crazy. But be careful how much you linger there. It's easy to jump between the front of the boat and that fish stick that's just right by it, and with these high turf coverage weapons, it's easy to get this area painted, that way if you get down there, you can cause some damage. On a mothership occurrence, our range isn't the best for this composition, but luckily we have that higher mobility. So try to keep all the weapons moving around, taking out those chinooks, and running the eggs as quick as possible. Remember that the chinooks that land there by the shoreline at the front of the boat are easy splats that you can get, and you can go down there, and you can either toss those eggs right into the basket or right by the basket, making them easier to put in. We gotta keep this area pretty cleared, that way when the mothership shows up we can cause some damage. If you already have that squiffer right there at the center of the boat, try to keep it right there, that way when the mothership's coming, you can cause some damage before it connects to the basket. With this composition, it doesn't change too much on a low tide mothership situation, but just try to be careful about fighting over someone else's targets or some of their eggs. Split up and try to utilize your range and your damage. For a Kohawk charge, the mini and the squiffer have the most awkward fire rate, so try to put them in the turrets, that way those high mobility shooters can run those eggs. And if you're in the turrets, just try to be really aware about what's happening on both sides of the shoreline. It's really easy to get tunnel vision, and all of a sudden you're getting splat by something. On a mudmouth occurrence, that mini and the squiffer have it the easiest with taking out lessers. So as long as the junior and the end zap are focusing on throwing bombs, it should be pretty easy to keep some lesser control on this map, and to keep running those eggs pretty quickly. And try to pay attention to whether or not you're on a wave 3 mudmouth. If you are, start using those specials, and try to maximize that egg count. On a Goldie Seeker at Marooner's Bay, we can keep up with that same strategy of opening up gushers as quick as possible to get the information, but as long as we focus on the two valves on the shoreline by the front of the boat, these will give us the information to know whether or not it's actually right there by the basket. If both of those valves are tall, then you know it's going to be one of the two valves right by the basket. If one of them are short, then you know it's going to be on that side of the boat. And just try to make sure that you're not popping out all the eggs there at the end of the boat as well. Try to make sure that those eggs are somewhere close to the front of the boat, even if they're there on the shoreline. They're that much easier to toss either straight into the basket or right by the basket. And don't lose focus on lesser control on a Goldie Seek. It's very important to keep this area cleared. That way, when we splat that Goldie, we can get the eggs in really quickly and then find them again. And our last occurrence is a giant tornado. We can usually use the rules that we have on a Mudmouth Wave to make Lesser Control just that much easier. That Mini and the Squiffer can do a fantastic job on dealing damage to a lot of Lessers, that way our high mobility, high ink efficiency weapons can focus on running eggs. This composition is looking really good, so just make sure that you're running those eggs, and if you have the Squiffer or the Mini, focus on that Lesser Control and dealing as much damage as you can with those weapons, and these waves should go pretty well. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Splattershot Jr. The Splattershot Jr. deals with the situation of having a really wide spread but an incredibly fast fire rate. Its damage is also sitting just a little bit low, so if you want to cause some maximum damage with this weapon, you gotta get close like it's the splush matic If you're trying to utilize this weapon at range, then try to make sure that you're using it against a large horde of enemies. And if you're doing that, get a little bit of height on those enemies, and that'll open up your spread just that much more. The Junior does have the lowest multi-target DPS in this whole composition, but it has some amazing coverage. So definitely try to utilize the Junior in running eggs in this composition. However, the Junior also has the best ink efficiency in this composition. So try to make sure you're not getting too low in your ink tank, and you should have it the easiest on taking out Flyfish. I give the Splattershot Junior a wall paint score of 7 out of 10 here at Marooner's Bay. 
That shorter range and the RNG of the shot makes it just a little bit difficult to paint these walls from far away, so you usually have to be pretty close to the walls. But luckily, when you get close enough, that junior has some pretty good coverage on the wall. Our second cooking utensil is the NZAP. The NZAP has a little bit more range than the Splattershot Junior, but what's really nice is its aim is really tight. So it'll be helpful to try to utilize those moments where you need that really tight aim. Look for those moments where you have the advantage on a steelhead. Jumping does make your aim less accurate, so just be careful that you might be missing some shots on some enemies if you're really used to swim jumping. The NZAP and the Mini have it the easiest with taking out fish sticks from the ground level, but for fish sticks, you have to get right underneath them in order to splat the enemies. So try to utilize that really tight aim to paint the side of the fish stick and get on top of it. And for these shooters, try to practice how far your aim goes whenever you're on top of a ledge. Your range does change a little bit depending on how high you are. I give the NZAP a wall paint score of 8 out of 10 here at Marooner's Bay. Just that little bit of extended range and tight coverage that this weapon has, it makes it that much easier to get some really intentional coverage onto these walls. Our third cooking utensil is the Mini Splatling. The Mini Splatling charges up really quickly and it has some really good DPS with it. But it can be kind of confusing to know when you need to start charging this weapon up and when to utilize it. But one helpful thing to know is whenever you let go of the trigger and start releasing that charge, you can hold down the trigger again, that way whenever your first charge is done firing, you'll be ready to charge up that next one as soon as possible. The Mini Splatling will have it the hardest to play aggressively in this composition, so try to definitely make sure that you're playing this more supportively. The Mini can do some fantastic support paired up with any other weapon in this composition, and that really fast fire rate that it has also gives it some amazing coverage. So try to make sure that you're utilizing the Mini as an all-arounder here at this map, both splatting lessers and bosses, and just be super careful about playing it super duper aggressively. I give the Mini Splatling a wall paint score of 7 out of 10 here at Marooner's Bay. It has that splatling fire rate which gets walls painted really well, but that charge just doesn't last long enough to get too many walls painted at one time. But what can be helpful is using half charges to get a single vertical strip on the wall, that way you can ascend it and get to safety. Our last cooking utensil is the Classic Squiffer. As I said before, the Classic Squiffer does not have jump lag with its charge. Even with that said, it's helpful to have your charges ready to go and then swim jump them into that location. And you need to get the Squiffer into really smart locations, that way you can use its piercing damage. The Squiffer's range can be deceivingly short sometimes if you're used to playing with something like the Splat Charger or the E-Leader 4K. So try to look for those moments where you can play aggressively but just in really smart ways. As long as you're always making sure that you can get in two charge shots on a Quahawk, then it can also clear up any other Quahawk in that line of damage. So whether you want to play the Squiffer aggressively or supportively, just make sure that you're getting it in there and you're causing some damage. Since it has the worst turf coverage and the worst wall coverage, you definitely want to make sure you're using it more with damage in mind. Be prepared to charge up that Squiffer and swim jump it into the right spot so that way you can splat a steelhead. I give the classic Squiffer a wall paint score of 4 out of 10 here at Marooner's Bay. The quicker charge of this weapon does allow you to get it to a quarter of the charge more often, and with that quarter charge, you'll be able to put a strip of paint on the wall. But considering how much time it takes to get these walls painted with the classic Squiffer, try to focus more on painting turf or getting the taller walls on the elevator. The King Negrasis with his presence on this composition will be Horaborus. And Horaborus on Marooner's Bay does go pretty far out there onto the shoreline. So try to utilize those moments where he's far away from the basket to splat some bosses and some enemies, getting some golden eggs, that way you're ready to splat that Booyah Bomb whenever it's charging. And try to keep a close eye on Boris too. Try to start causing damage to that Booyah Bomb when it's very small, that way you can splat it before he launches it. If you're not able to splat that Booyah Bomb before he launches it, then it's helpful to know that there is some of that damage left behind on the Booyah Bomb. But it doesn't keep all of the HP damage. So definitely try to splat that Booyah Bomb every time that he's charging it up. You can also shoot Boris' body to cause some damage to him that way, but if everybody's focused on Boris, then we're going to get overrun. So try to keep that gameplay tight, deal with those priority targets, and splat bosses quick. That way you can get those eggs and splat this noodle steelhead. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye 
To give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. For this composition, I'm going to have to give it to the end zap. I actually main the splatter shot junior, but it's really nice here at the bay to have some really quick coverage, especially for flipper floppers. And as I'm recording this, I'm flipping and flopping about which one I want to pick, so it might just be a tie. Alrighty guys, bye bye.